application objects and groups. Okay, everyone, as we continue our journey into the Palo Alto's Pan OS 8 interface, we're going to start looking at one of the next generation firewall features. And it's the fact that you can classify network traffic inbound or outbound from your firewall based on applications. How cool is that, huh? You can have policies that are applied to inbound or outbound traffic based on application. So the Palo Alto is able to inspect that packet as it flows through the zone and is going to be able to tell what type of application it's matching the traffic for and you can put some rules for it. For example, you can put a rule to block access to the Facebook application. You can put a rule to allow access to Netflix but deny to Hulu. You can put a rule to only allow Windows updates to certain subnets on the network. You can put another rule to allow the C-level executives access to every single website, every single application, but deny to the rest of the environment. And you know what I'm saying. So we're going to take a look at all that and uh, we're going to get some application objects created. Now that we know how to apply groups, we're going to classify application objects into groups. So if we have a set of predefined applications that our environment wants to allow to a specific user or a specific group of people, we can create a group and then add all those applications in and we only make one single policy. Again, remember, we want to make as clean as possible a policy table so we can troubleshoot everything easier and we can see the issue or we can understand what's going on as far as traffic flow in and out from the firewall without too much effort. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's create some application objects. Let's go ahead and click on objects. Let's click on applications. Once you're in the applications menu, you're going to be shown a table, or I should say a list of all possible applications that you can be identifying on your policies and in your firewall. We can begin with the category. So the Palo Alto breaks down applications into categories, business system, anything that's related to business case usage, for example, any services like O365, you know, Office 365, any mail service that is outside, it most definitely will be shown on this category. Uh, same with collaboration. If you're doing voice like Skype or you're doing instant messaging, it usually falls under collaboration and such. This is how Palo Alto classifies their applications. They can classify it by category and inside the category you got subcategories because this might have dependency upon any other services. So that basically is how the, the PA will, will be classifying that particular application. You also have the type of transport. Is it a browser based meaning that are you going to be accessing that application using your web browser? Is it a client to server meaning that you have a client application running on your machine going to communicate to the server as it's going to provide the service? Is it a, just a network protocol meaning that it doesn't necessarily have an application on the back end. It's just a network protocol that uses to communicate between your device and the outside resource. Or is a peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning that you're collaborating in a peer-to-peer -peer network. Most of the case, this is where a lot of file sharing services or BitTorrent falls into, because uh, it's a peer-to-peer. -peer. Everyone collaborates the environment, that type of network uh, I'm talking about when it comes to peer-to-peer. -peer. Very handy. By default, the Palo Alto will have its database service. In this case, it does reference to their uh, Palo Alto security, threat security um, cloud platform. In this case, uh, with Wildfire, um, they do analytics when it comes to threats and classify traffic, or I should say applications or websites based on risk. If the risk is high, you're going to get a number five, meaning that you should not allow traffic outbound to those resources. If it's one, it's the lowest, it's safe for access. Also, characteristics, if there's custom information or if you want to give specific identity to those applications, characteristics are basically a way to do it. We're going to take a look at how to create a application object. And when I mean by application object, those are all application objects. Those will be the Palo Alto database application objects. So those application objects are provided by the Palo Alto cloud database. If 
for some reason, you don't see an application that you need to identify that it's available on the Palo Alto database, you're going to need to create a custom application object. And this is how you tell the Palo Alto, hey, look for this particular characteristics in your traffic, in, your tra in the firewall traffic flow. And then find specific details so we can tell the firewall, hey, if you see something like this, treat it as application XYZ. Meaning that if you have an application that is not identified already in the Palo Alto database, meaning a custom application, maybe something that you wrote and it's running on your environment, chances are it's not on the Palo Alto application database. So you're going to be creating a custom application object to provide identity to the firewall so the firewall can properly identify that traffic. Else, if you don't do that, Palo Alto might show the traffic as unknown. And when you put global policies to block malicious websites, sometimes you also block unknown, and then you might be blocking something that not necessarily is malicious. It might be something that is just not classified, and uh, it can cause a lot of issues. So this is where creating application objects comes into place. So we're just going to click on that. And say, for example, we're going to do a quick example here. We have an application that talks to a database service. And in this case, the insight to the DMC is going to reach our DMC server. In this case, a web server, but the web server needs to talk back to the database server. But we need to classify the traffic from the database outbound to the server. So if for some reason it needs to query the web server for something, we can tell the Palo Alto, hey, this is this application. Make sure that you allow it. And this is how you basically put it on the firewall. So let's say database, or we can call it something very catchy, a custom app. And if you have the name, you can type the name, one. And then we're going to say it's part of our business systems. In this case, it's an application that is used in our production environment. This is operations. The parent application. Okay, so say, for example, that application needs to talk to a cloud SaaS operator, software as a service operator, and it's been hosted in Azure. You can tell on the application object, hey, this application depends upon Azure or AWS. If you like Amazon Web Services, you can tell the application, hey, this application need depends upon that cloud service. In this case, let's do AWS and we can also specify Azure. That's the case. So say, for example, it needs access to the AWS side or it needs access to the Azure side. So we can type Azure. And then we can basically tell the application, hey, it's dependent upon the Azure service to function. We're going to also provide the subcategory, I should say, that falls under the global category. So on my business system, this is actually my marketing application. So it falls, it's the business system category, but inside my business system, it's subcategory. The risk, I know is a risk, it's one. And then technology, it is a web application. So in this case, it's browser-based. With that said, I can efficiently provide an identity to the application. There's more to it. For example, if we know a specific port that application talks to intrazone traffic, so it will need to talk intrazone, you're going to have a way to identify if you have already the port that it's going to try to communicate to. Say, for example, it uses a port, and that destination port will be, and we can make something up, 546. We're basically telling the firewall, if you see anything that is outbound going to 4546, treat it as this application name. And that's how you can apply a policy to allow that and avoid the Palo Alto of not identifying it properly and blocking it because it's treating it as an unknown application. Anything that is default even, so if you have a web application that it's 480 and, or 443, then you don't need to do this because it's going to fall under the service until the HTTP, HTTPS unless you add signatures. When you add signatures, on top of being an HTTP, HTTPS, you can create a custom policy that even though that is HTTP, HTTPS, which I am allowing, I am adding a signature so it can differentiate from any other application. So if I have an application that I'm not necessarily, I want to allow, but it's HTTP, HTTPS, which is allowed globally, then I can have a signature added. And that's where all those application objects, they're already identify for you. So you don't need to worry about that because they're most definitely going to be using SSL 443 or they're going to be using port 80. So if you need to identify some other method to identify the application and that's where signatures come into place. You just grab something that can identify that application, an attribute that the firewall can see once the traffic is flowing and then, oh yeah, I see this on my packet. It means that this is this application, even though that is port 80 or 443 as HTTPS, I have a specific signature. 
I am allowing HTTP, HTTPS, but I have another rule that it says that if, if it matches this particular application, I want you to block it. This is where signatures come into place. And you can find any uh, attribute to make a signature effective. So for example, if you have an HTTP header, meaning that you know the complete URL, that once it hits that resource, you're gonna see that flowing on the firewall. So the firewall will be able to see that on the packet. You can add that as a signature. And then the Palo Alto will know that, hey, if you see that URL address, I want you to treat it as this application. And this is where you can add that as a condition. So you can create conditions, you can create multiple conditions. And here, yeah, so you have pattern match and you can basically classify the traffic based on a particular pattern. Context, so this is where we tell the Palo Alto where to look for that specific information on the packet itself. If you have Wireshark, you should be able to find those particular information on the packet. So say for example, and we're just gonna make something real quick here. I have my header and my header will say, okay, so I am looking for this is my website and this is just .com. We're looking for www.thisismywebsite.com. Then we'll know that this belongs to this particular application. So anything that matches, this is my website.com. And again, this is just me showing you a, an example. You can call this as a signature. This is identifier. We can call it identifier for my custom app. And that's how the Palo Alto will know that, oh yeah, I see the HTTP header that it's showing as this is my website. I know that it matches this identifier, this signature. Okay, let me treat it as this custom app. And then you can put a policy and just add the object and tell, hey, deny or allow. And then anything that hits that particular website, even though that you're allowing HTTP, HTTPS, you're gonna block it. So that's how you basically classify traffic that cannot be classified based on default applications. Alrighty, okay, so let's continue. Just click on cancel. This was just an example. Let me go ahead and uh, show you how you can classify any other traffic. So say for example, you want to talk about Netflix. Okay, so say for example, let's take YouTube for example. Say your policy is not to allow YouTube as to be reached or to be accessed from the outside for your internal users and you need to put a policy that blocks YouTube. Okay, so the first thing, you're gonna click on application groups and you're gonna create that group of services that are dependent so YouTube can open. We're gonna click add, we're gonna type the name, and this is YouTube, this is my application group name, right? And then inside here, we need to add everything that's dependent upon YouTube. How do you find out what's dependent upon YouTube? Okay, this is where Applipedia comes into play. We're gonna go to Applipedia and we're gonna see what is dependent for YouTube to function properly. Okay, everyone, so we just finished the application objects and group video. In the next video, we're going to be understanding how to use and find information on the Palo Alto Networks Applipedia. This case is going to allow us to build those application groups by selecting the right dependencies for those application objects. So let's continue on to understanding Palo Alto Networks Applipedia.